So we've got to a very cool spot. It's the ferry or the pond, depending on what you know. Um, the river is high, so there's only one working at the moment, and it's a big one. Nice. He's going to take our four vehicles over at one shot, which is pretty cool. It's not very far. I'd give it maybe half a k down the down the river, look down the road, um, and it's it's a beautiful day, um, and we're really looking forward to it. Not looking forward to the road. Uh, the road's going to be really brutal. Um, so we're going to drop tire pressures shortly and just make sure that everything is going to be okay for when we're on that side so we can pretty much drive off and head straight out. So much excitement from my side. I have great memory of this spot so I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Once you get to the pond, it takes maybe 45 minutes to an hour for you to get onto it to take the boat ride down. It was such an epic day and it's such a beautiful experience that we absolutely loved it every time we get to do it. We drove off, checked everything, gathered the crew and started heading off parallel to the brand new road and bridge that was being built. The dirt road didn't let us down. It was bumpy, grinding with lots of chicken runs. Hello. Hello. Do you have water? Yes. Water, water, water. You've got water. Yeah. Okay. You've got water. You've got water. You've got container. No. Let's go. Is the motor running? Okay, okay. Answer the right thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help you. That is dead. They're shouting. There's no help. I don't know. I asked them for water. They said it's fine. I said we can give you. And he goes, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. He's out. After about 45 minutes drive, we finally arrived at Mokhacha school. We realized it was lunchtime by then, and the kids were getting their nourishment for the day. Sometimes they get two meals a day, but definitely one. This today was a very nice porridge, which I had myself. We set up our vehicles, got everything in order for shade, while Khobo gave a brief instruction on what the kids need to do. I feel to be just actually on the ground letting this project happen. Uh, honestly, it's phenomenal. It's uh, it's something that we really loved supporting and hearing about uh, up until now and to actually be here and to see the incredible work that's happening. Uh, I'm blown away at the positive impacts that are happening right now. So couldn't be more excited to continue the journey and see all the good that's going to come from it. I mean, how many other people do what I do? Yeah, yeah, because like, like how, how often do they receive help like this and, and how, you know, considering how hard it is to get out here and what the infrastructure is. Yeah. Yeah, right. We're doing a lot. We'll go. Okay, so... I, I actually don't know... So you... It's difficult to explain. There's no one that does what we do. You get NGOs that focus on this type of thing all the time. Uh, but, but that's their job. For us, no. I actually don't know many. There's a few other people that go and do certain projects. There's maybe like malaria and things like that. But that's a very different level. Um, because we don't, we don't carry medications and things like that. So that's mostly government related initiatives with private funding. I. There's another guy called Kingsley Holgate. He does a lot of malaria and he does some on the glasses, but it's more uh, uh, free readers.
So it's not what we do. We're very specific in, in, in the testing. You know anyone else that's doing humanitarian work like this, I'm sure they're out there. Um, there's some people that send videos. Um, they go to certain schools and they put videos up, but it's not like this. It doesn't have the, it doesn't have the same, you know, anyone can watch a video, which is great, but they don't go and, and give that support um, that's needed for the local communities. So, I mean, I've done a lot of research and finding out who and where and how, but I, I don't know. I mean, more people doing this would be a really great impact. Yeah. And it takes time because the areas we're going now, we're, in, we're doing 10 k's an hour on a road that doesn't exist on, on any map. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. it's slow going. And, it takes, it, and, and the planning is long because you would never find this place without without local support. Yeah. So being able to get that out is really cool. Yeah. Um, but to answer directly, no, I actually don't know anyone else doing what we're doing like this. Yeah. Um, besides the big NGOs and even they don't do eyes. Yeah, and it seems like it takes a lot of time to understand the problem. After finishing at the last school called Ngambao, we finished off in a little village called Saronga, where we took a right turn, drove onto the open plain, and settled down for the evening. We opened up our campers, set up the disco, and cooked until the fire went out. Waking up early the next morning, we set up camp, made sure the fire was out and headed off to Gunat Sogo to start the day's work. There we had a great surprise and much joy. <laughs> 